Welcome everyone to the SCORE Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host Justin Boone, the lead fantasy analyst at the SCORE, and today's episode is presented by Head & Shoulders. Offense for great hair, defense against flakes. Offense for great hair. Defense against flakes. Head. Shoulders. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in to show this week because I know how busy it is with Thanksgiving, but I promise you will not be disappointed by our guests. There are a few articles that are absolutely must-reads that I have to go through every single week when I'm doing my research, and I will admit this guy writes one of them. It's Ian Harditz of Roto World. You can find him on Twitter, at iHarditz. Ian, I want to thank you, man, for coming on the show this week. I know how busy everybody is, so I really hope that we're not pulling you away from friends or family or anything like that. It's all good, man. I appreciate you having me on. But yeah, best day of the year tomorrow, man. Nothing but uh, football and food, so it's hard not to be excited. Well, like I said, I want to thank you because that wide receiver, cornerback, tight end analysis column that you're doing, it is awesome. Every week when I read it, I'm pulling away at least a few things that are helping me in my work. So I owe at least a portion of my success this year. I definitely owe it to the analysis that you're doing there. So thank you for that. And I'm excited (laughs) that you're here because you're going to help share that knowledge with everybody this week. I appreciate it. It's about an, I say, eight to 10 hour process from the time I start kind of projecting the matchups to putting down the final word. So I'm happy it's helpful, but, you know, I I know it'll be wrong sometimes, but, but at least we're trying to, you know, look at every actionable angle and hopefully find some good plays. So I'm ready to talk some ball. Well, a lot of what we're going to talk about today are going to be these offense versus defense matchups. So let's start off with a heavyweight bout between the Texans receivers and the Patriots secondary. Now, New England secondary, they've shut down pretty much every receiver they've gone against this year. I mean, they're allowing the fewest fantasy points to the position. Really, I think Golden Tate is the only guy off the top of my head that I can think of that had a really good game against yep. him. And he might be the only guy who scored a touchdown against them, the only receiver anyway, uh, this year. I know last week Randall Cobb had like 86 yards, but while that was happening, you had Amari Cooper who was getting absolutely blanked during that game. And that 86 yards that Cobb put up, I think that's the second highest total that any receivers put up in the Patriots this year. So nobody's done that well against them. Now this week in that Amari Cooper role, it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins who gets potentially that shadow coverage from Gilmore. I'm thinking back to maybe it was a couple years ago when the Patriots didn't put their top guy shadowing Hopkins. They would put a little more coverage to his side and they'd put their top guy on the second receiver, whether it was Fuller or someone else during that time. So I'm not sure you're going to give us a better idea here of what's going to happen this week. How do you envision this matchup going, not just for Hopkins, but for Fuller as well against that Patriots secondary? Yeah. I mean, thinking back to 2017 is where you're looking at when they had Jason McCourty go ahead and track Hopkins, but or I don't know, I'm sorry, that, that was when, back, back when McCord was in Cleveland. But yeah, <laughs> looking at Gilmore on Hopkins, they've, you know, that does happen sometimes. I remember the Saints were doing that last season where, you know, you have Lattimore take the number take the number two guy and then you bracket the number one guy with safety help. But no, it's, it's going to be uh, the number one on number one, man. And this is, I think, the best shadow matchup of this week. So Hopkins has survived it the last two times he's faced the Patriots. I mean, seven catches for 76 yards and eight catches for 78 yards. But I mean, if anything, Gilmore and this entire Patriots defense, they just lower the ceiling on what any capable is possible is, uh, um, you know, capable of achieving. We, uh, you mentioned that Golden Tay in the Randall Cobb game. I don't like to take away players, big plays because like they created those plays and stuff. But yep. with that said, I mean, Golden Tate only got to go over a hundred, only wide receiver to go over a hundred yards in the Patriots this season. A lot of that was because he had that nice 60 yard, uh, you know, catch and run. Randall Cobb last week, same thing. I think it was 59 yards where he kind of got a deep cross and was able to run away from everyone. So truly, I mean, they make you, it's very tough to just go down the field and keep earning consistent yards against the Patriots because of how sound they are. So we're going to need, uh, Hopkins to, if he really wants to crush this game, I think we're going to need him to find some broken coverage or hit at least one big play because it's going to be tough to just, you know, beat Gilmore eight to 10 times and just really keep racking up those catches. But with that said, I mean, I do think Deshaun Watson is the type of quarterback that could find a way to make some big plays against his Patriots secondary. Because look, I mean, everyone always uh, bitches out Watson for taking all these sacks, holding the ball too long. But the guy holds the ball so long because two or three times a game, he makes, you know, the impossible happen because he makes three dudes miss in the backfield before uncorking it downfield. So I do feel way better about Hopkins' chances now that Will Fuller is back in, in the equation. You know, a lot, a lot of wide receivers, you bring in more competition for targets. It's not a good thing. But Will Fuller, I mean, we're truly talking about one of the most 
uh, you know, field stretching an elite wide receivers at just taking the top off of defenses and the league and 140 yards last week on a 90% snap rate. He's back playing full time. It's tough to predict any offense is going to do well against this Patriots secondary. They're that good. But with that said, you know, a quarterback that can escape the pressure, a guy like Hopkins that even when he's covered, he can make any catch. And a guy like Fuller, who's going to demand that extra safety attention, even if you want to try to, uh, you know, pay, pay extra mind to Hopkins. I see a scenario where the Texans can move the ball through the air in this game. That's good to hear. I mean, my initial run through the rankings, I bumped Hopkins down. I mean, he's still a wide receiver one. But he was right. more in that low-end wide receiver one range. And it did the same like Amari Cooper. And we'll talk more about him later. But last week, he's got some other things going on, some injuries and stuff. But Cooper, who you normally see in that low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two range, I had him all the way as like a fringe wide receiver two. I think he might even fall into wide receiver three. Uh, for me. And it's all because of that matchup. You have Fuller come back last week and have the big game. I'm still concerned about these guys. I think with Fuller and with Hopkins – you probably have to put him in your lineup regardless. You're not going to bench DeAndre Hopkins at For any sure. point. It doesn't matter what the matchup is. But I, expectations got to be pulled way back against this Patriots team, no matter who it is at this point. And the thing with Gilmore, too, that he doesn't get enough for, uh, cr- credit for is he actually chases guys into the slot as well. And not many shadow cornerbacks do that. I mean, you know, we, we denote like a shadow matchup is when a cornerback is moving sideline to sideline with the primary wide receiver, spending, you know, 60% plus snaps or so on this guy. But almost every uh, wide receiver can kind of escape that shadow coverage by moving into the slot. Not with Gilmore. He is good enough to go inside and do that. And you really only see it out of the Belichick coaching tree because they do it in New England. And then Darius Slay does it in Detroit with Matt Patricia over there too. So, yeah, man, I mean, I – I do these wide receiver quarterback matchups every week. I do think they're very important. With that said, you know, because of the nature of some of these cornerbacks, uh, we tend to overrate them a little bit at times. But Stephon Gilmore, again, because of how much he travels all over the field, he's one of these guys that we truly do need to downgrade for. That is all for the video version of today's podcast. Big thanks to everybody for watching, and good luck in week 13. Said leave on time, my baby said leave on time.